The theme of today's event is redefining success. Before you can redefine it, you've got to define it. And before you can define something, you've got to look at the context for it. So let's look at the history of the context surrounding success in terms of humanity. Well, when humanity first starts in the Olduvai Gorge, um, humanity's success is survival. You either eat or be eaten. And if you can't make it to survive, you're not going to have any success at all. Then as society gets more technologically advanced and begins to get structured, success turns into a larger context, the context of your family. Can you have your children, keep them alive? Can you support your spouse? And then the society begins to aggregate and the family turns into a tribe. Are you the chief? Are you a brave? Are you keeping the home fires going? And the tribe ultimately turns into a village and now you're talking about societal structures and the ultimate societal structure of course then becomes government in the form of a monarch and the king decides who is successful and where you are in the, in the total hierarchy. <clears throat> and then of course there's something even bigger than the king, something that is transnational that defines our success. And what is that? Well, it's religion divinely inspired, but internationally human-oriented. And religion defines whether you are a good person, a successful person. But then we get into the 20th century, and something comes along that's bigger than religion and bigger than all these other former structures of society. And what is that? It's the reason we're here at the stock exchange. <clears throat> it's the corporation. It's the company. It's your job. And whether your job is on an assembly line or a piecework factory, whether you're a blue collar or a white collar worker, the job and the career, which is defined as the job, has become the context for your success. And therefore, you were expected to enter into a company for a lifetime career, whether it's the salary man in Japan, whether it's lifetime employment here in the US, um, and you go through positions of successive responsibility with successively more job titles, higher job titles, and more money. And then at the end of the day, your success is officially documented when you, in this iconic photograph, you receive your gold watch and your pension at age 65, and this is success. So. Okay, uh, not bad, but um, how did the company get to be in this position? So for this, we have to take a little break from context and go into a very quick course in economics. Uh, thanks to a guy named Ronald Coase, who was a professor at the University of Chicago. He's now 101 years old and going strong. And Coase won the Nobel Prize for his theory of the firm, saying, where do companies come from? Why do they exist? And it turns out that as society gets increasingly technologically sophisticated, more people and more parts are required to make more things. And every one of those people getting it together requires a cost. There's a transaction cost involved. And if it turns out to be cheaper to bring all those costs in-house to employ everybody and all the pieces, then the company gets bigger and bigger and grows and grows. And therefore, the corporation, the company started 500 years ago, gets to the 20th century and begins to grow, metastasize almost. Mid 20th century, the company is the biggest thing around. This is the Fleischmann Yeast Factory. It's right up here at the Hudson in Peekskill, New York. The world's largest yeast factory employs tens of thousands of people, vertically integrated, has its own railroad tracks and its own apartments for the workers and everything else because it was cheaper to vertically integrate and do this internally. But then something strange happens along the way. And what happens is technology continues to increase, and now communication increases. We have globalization, we have outsourcing and crowdsourcing. It turns out that more people can do more things with less amount of work and fewer people in a technologically enhanced environment. So in the course of one lifetime, from 1924 when this illustration was done, to 1994 when this photograph was taken, and that is now a parking lot in Peekskill. What has happened to the company? The company has begun to shrink and shrink and shrink and it's on its way to almost disappearing as we enter the 21st century. And so that means that the context of our success is no longer your fellow peers and your uh, corporate team. Instead, we have to redefine success as the new company, what my friend Reid Hoffman describes in his new book as the startup of you. You are the company, you are the context of your own success. And it's not just in corporate business. Let's think about the largest, most hierarchical, structured employer in the United States with absolutely clear success metrics. Uh, that would be the US Army. <clears throat> so in 2001, entering the 21st century, the US Army changes its motto to what? <clears throat> An army of one. Join the army. We'll give you a college degree. You can then go out and run your career separate from us after you're in the army. We have totally changed the concept of what's going on. When Twitter came out, 
several years ago, being an early adopter, uh, I got on Twitter uh, and said, um, uh, okay, well, what's this used for? It's used to provide status updates to my family. So I started you know, tweeting out to my family you know, where I was having dinner, what I thought of uh, um, a particular movie, and my tweets were followed by my kids and a couple of family members, um, and it was a, a closed environment. And then something very strange happened. Um, somebody sort of knocked on my Twitter door and said, I'd like to follow you. And I had no idea who this person was. So I sort of politely ignored it and kept going. And then a month later, somebody else knocked on who I had no idea and said, I want to follow you. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why these people wanted to follow up what I was doing in terms of dinners or, or whatever. And then one day, when it got to about four months later, and I had 150 people who wanted to follow my tweets, I said, clearly, I'm missing something. Let's rethink this. And I had an epiphany. And the epiphany was that they want to hear what I have to say, that I now have a megaphone, that I now have a voice. So at that point, I said, OK, hmm, this is a new world. Let's change this around. So I stopped tweeting out about my movies and my places to eat. And I opened up my Twitter feed. It was no longer much useful to my family, but it actually became sort of useful to my Twitter followers. And so then I began to not actively manage my profile, but at least pay attention to it. So now on Twitter, anybody who wants to can follow my tweets, people who hear me speak, people who are in my portfolio companies. Um, and today, without actively managing a whole lot of my life, I have over 4,000 people who are following every tweet that I put out on Twitter. So when I come here this morning and say, I'll be speaking at TEDx Wall Street, that shows up in the Twitter feeds of over 4,000 people. And even if only you know, the average Twitter followers for them is 100 people, say, not 4,000, if each of them tweets it out, that's a reach of almost half a million people who would know what's going on. So all of a sudden, I have a bully pulpit. And you know what? It's not just Twitter. There are a whole host of sites. One that I love is called Quora. It's a question and answer site. And on Quora, I've got over 2,000 people who follow what I have to say. So now I have developed what is known as a personal brand. What the heck's personal brand? Google it, and you'll find over 2 million hits on this, because this is the way of the future. This is the career of the future. If you are going to be functioning in the world from now on, success has been redefined by each of us personally. And therefore, we have to be ourselves part of the conversation. Whether you're an entrepreneur or an investor, whether you are a chef or a carpenter, whether you're a hedge fund trader or a Wall Street broker here at the exchange, you have to be part of the conversation in and around and of your industry and your life because this is critical and this is where the future is and this is where the future of success will be. Now, if you look at all of these platforms, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn or Quora or any of these venues, this brings us back to the point and place of beginning for today. When Don Tapscott said that the way Wall Street needs to change is for three things, these three, three things apply double and triple in spades to you personally and the brand of you. The first one is collaboration. These are all collaboration platforms. You collaborate in creating news and in spreading news. You collaborate in doing things online, personal production, and finding people to work with. There is transparency, which is critical because everything you do can and will be not used against you, but used for you. This is the wonderful megaphone online where you can take your things and reach an enormous audience. And then finally, that leads to the thing he began with and I will end with, which is the one critical piece for success in this new generation. And that is integrity. Integrity comes from the Latin word integral, meaning one. You have one person, you are one person, and you are responsible for that person. In any online fora, you would go for a job, your employer will look at you on tweet, look at your tweet stream, he'll look at you on LinkedIn. Anything you do, anybody you work with will see who and what you are. And so therefore, I can think of no better way than to close out TEDx Wall Street by looking at Ralph Waldo Emerson 100 years ago. What did he say about success? To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived this is to have succeeded. Thank you.